May I now request Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral Mohammed Amjad Khan Niazi, Nishani Imtiaz Military, Sitare Bissala, to kindly address the parade. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulah al-kareem. Admiral Naveed Ashraf, Chief of the Naval Staff, Azik, Former Chiefs of the Naval Staff, Flag Officers, Officers, Chief Petty Officers, Sailors, Navy Civilians, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. To begin with, I profoundly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His countless blessings that enabled me to command Pakistan Navy with dignity and honor. I stand here today with a deep sense of humility and pride. Humility for being in the wake of my worthy predecessors who stood here before me. And pride because by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I was able to discharge my duties to the best of my abilities and in the best interest of service. I am about to pass on the reins of this great service to my worthy successor. Here I would congratulate Elban David Ashraf for having been appointed to this prestigious yet onerous responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, during the last three years, we witnessed the world transform due to COVID-19 pandemic. Navies across the world faced unprecedented challenges in maintaining optimum operational readiness. The, pand the pandemic also impacted the world economy due to large-scale shutdowns and Pakistan was no exception. We also endured deteriorated internal security situation post-US withdrawal from Afghanistan and the devastating floods of 2022 that struck, struck us at a critical juncture, causing loss of precious lives and accentuating strains on an already fragile economy. I say this with full satisfaction that by the grace of Allah, untiring support of my principal staff officers at Naval Headquarters and field commands who were able to steer Pakistan Navy through these turbulent times. Today, the Navy stands as a strong and vital arm of country's armed forces, capable of protecting our maritime frontiers and radiating deterrence. Pakistan Navy has also emerged as an effective contributor towards socio-economic uplift of the country, bringing a paradigm shift in the image of Pakistan Navy at the national and international levels. Today, the backbone of our service is formed by state-of-the-art surface ships, a dependable subsurface force, superior naval aviation, and agile marines. Me and my team strive for this transformation which was made possible by our shift from threat-based to capability-based planning from a mere defender to a warfighter mindset and from a reactive crisis handler to a proactive problem-solver approach. This has been incorporated into our training from basic to advanced professional courses as well. I am fully confident that this will continue to get strengthened with time. <clears throat> <clears throat> our successes as a service would greatly depend on our willingness to embrace innovation, adapt to changing times, and be prepared to leverage technology to fight wars that may be beyond our current imagination. I emphasized on introduction of AI and mechatronics in the Navy. We must keep in mind that capabilities of artificial intelligence, robotics, and unmanned systems 
would be the cornerstones of success or failure in the next conflict. We cannot afford to ignore these domains, not even slightly. In this age of fifth generation warfare, our people are under a multitude of social, economic and ideological stresses, which are ubiquitous in nature. This needs us to continue to stay engaged with our crew so that all adversarial attempts may be fought back strongly. It was my personal goal to make sure our people understood the importance of information security and perils of the misguided social media. This is something that must continue to be an area of real concern. Ladies and gentlemen, as India transitions into Bharat, we will see pronounced fundamentalism, extremism and bigotry in our neighborhood. This implies a significant warmongering and expansion-centered agenda that will complicate security challenges for us in the future. Cold start, proactive operations, operations and dynamic, dynamic response strategy represent various forms of aggression rather than defensive constructs. We must be prepared to respond to these challenges with professionalism, preparedness and unwavering self-esteem. Apart from the traditional nemesis, we face myriad non-traditional and unconventional threats. Although the number and, and intensity of these threats might change, they will continue to perpetuate, perpetuate our security priorities. Terror groups, non-state actors and sub-national dissidents will remain a source of hybrid war, stretching our war-fighting resources. Situational awareness and training at all levels will be the principal determinant of our dominance over these forces of tyranny across the spectrum of conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan believes in collaboration when it comes to maritime security. Being the first regional country to join CMF's initiatives, Pakistan was again the first country to voice for and demonstrate the region-led, region-owned maritime construct of regional maritime security patrols. Amman series of exercises are one of the biggest international platforms for many nations around the world to muster together and share views on issues surrounding securities and threats. Our Navy is the major practical component of Pakistan's foreign policy. Our ships carry the impression of first responders whenever a humanitarian crisis strikes humanity. Tsunami relief, Sri Lankan floods, Pakistan's super floods, the African food crisis and Turkey earthquakes are some of the occasions where our naval ships played instrumental role in HADR. In the recent Pakistan floods, our brave men and women rendered their exemplary services and rescued thousands of flood victims and provided medical relief and shelter. Cognizant of the enormous potential of blue economy, Pakistan Navy in collaboration with Ministry of Maritime Affairs spearheaded first ever Pakistan International Maritime Expo and Conference earlier this year. I hope and believe that Admiral Naveed Ashraf will continue focusing on this domain. Contribution to nation building has always been on the agenda of naval chiefs and our service has done enormous work to provide quality education, improved health care and other services to our coastal communities. Ladies and gentlemen, over the course of my three years as Chief of the Navy, I have observed that leadership can be distilled into two core skill sets, being a pathfinder and a problem solver. We live in an age of change where combating uncertainty is the key leadership function. Being a pathfinder will instill an unshakable belief in your ideas, plans and motives among your crew. Now more than ever, a clear-headed, bold and decisive approach is needed. Problem solving is the second most crucial set that our officers and must that our officers and must, men must possess. In military service, do not think of any problem-free day. It won't happen. This necessitates leaders in these uncertain times to have 
or develop the quintessential capability to solve problems. Our leaders must avoid getting entrapped by risk aversion where it comes to those two skill sets. The work of arms is all about risk. An innovative, progressive and forward-looking disposition is far more essential for our Navy than a life anchored in careerism, material pursuits and outward success. So my dear shipmates, beware of these. Ladies and gentlemen, where we stand today would have been possible without the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and unflinching support extended by the finest body of men and women which I had the honor to command. As I hand over the command of Navy to Admiral Naveed Ashraf, I wish him the best of luck and a rewarding tenure in office. The Admiral has a distinguished career, has studied with notable achievements and I am sure he would prove to be an able and worthy successor who will lead the Navy to newer heights, inshallah. In the end, I would like to thank the government for having reposed their trust in me and providing Pakistan Navy much needed resources despite economic crunch to meet pressing operational service needs. I also thank Ministry of Defense, Joint Staff Headquarters and Sister Services for rendering all-out support to Pakistan Navy in execution of its sacred responsibilities of maritime defense. I find myself short of words to express my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his countless blessings throughout my life and in particular during my tenure at the helm of Pakistan Navy. As I say farewell to arms, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable Pakistan Navy to continue to gain strength and achieve zenith of excellence. Ameen. May Allah be, with, be our guardian. Pakistan Navy Zindabad. Pakistan Paindabad.